what, my Father? We call you the sweetest name that we believe that you are, our Father. You are healer. You are savior. You're everything that we need in this moment.
we just want to bless the Lord for today. What a worship, what a great worship, time of worship we've had. I just believe, uh, you know, you are blessed even through the worship, through the songs. God bless the team that has put it all together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. You know, God is worship. God is worship. Every time you worship, God is happy. Our praises and our worships go high up to Him. The Bible says it's like a sweet smelling aroma to Him. So every time you you thank God, you worship, you praise Him, He receives it with you know with that kind of happiness and His glory or it comes down in your situation in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, my name is David Waswa. I proudly the pastor of Christ Life. And I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our page uh, at YouTube, uh, at the, the Christ Life Church, and Facebook, The Christ Life. Visit us, send a comment, send, uh, send uh, you know, a post, a message, and we shall together be next. I want to tell you that we are praying with you guys. Whatever situation you are going through at this time, I know some of you are on lockdown, like here in Uganda, we are on a lockdown. I don't know where you are watching from, but whatever the, the situation, whatever the situation is, the Lord is in control. The Lord is in control. The Lord is in control. Amen and amen. Uh, today, I want us to, to share through the word. I just want to encourage someone today. Uh, through the word of God. You know, when uh, a country is locked down and uh, you're about to preach, somehow, like you, <laughs> you know, as you pray and you believe God to give you that, that someone, you know, the people that are hurting, the, uh, the people that are burying, the, the, the people that are sick in hospitals, you know, that thing fills your heart and you are like, God, you need to come out and save our country and save our nation and save your people and save and hear your people crying so if you're there you're crying you're believing God you have a sick person in the hospital I want you to believe with me that they are not going to go they're not going to die the Lord still loves them they are going to live they shall not die they shall live and see the glory of God and serve the Lord and do the great wonders of the Lord in Jesus's name so we are standing together in prayer and the Lord will surely do it and also comfort to them I, I know if you've lost someone like me personally I did I speak comfort, I speak peace I speak peace in your life in the name of Jesus Christ Amen so today um, I just want to, 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 to share a message simply uh, saying telling you that Jesus God will come to save you he will come to save you. He will come to save you. He's willing to come to save you. He's not blind. He's not mute. He's not deaf. That is not hearing your cry. He does. But above all, he loves you. He loves you so much that he's come, going to come and save you in this situation. I don't know what people are announcing to you. Maybe people, people are telling you that uh, uh, your time is up. It's now that you go. Uh, maybe people are telling you that for the next the next season is going to be hard for you, uh, for you to be able to feed your family, for you to be able to go through your life successfully. I want to tell you that's a lie. That's a lie. God is willing to come up for you. He's only telling you to to just be still, just be still and know that He is God. He will come and save you. I want to read the script uh, scriptures, a story. Uh, in a paraphrased manner, uh, Judges chapter 6. You all know the, uh, the story of Gideon and, uh, and the time when the Midianites came and oppressed Israel. You know, uh, the Bible says, uh, that is uh, Judges chapter 6 from verse 1. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian, Midianite for seven years. Verse, verse 2. And the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel. Midian is the enemy that comes to beat us down, to oppress us. It is the sickness, it is the disease, it is the, it is the lack. You know, it is it, it's the enemy, it's the devil. 
because the Midianites and the, uh, because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made themselves dens and caves and strongholds, which are in the mountains. So, because this enemy came against Israel, the children of Israel made for themselves caves and dens for what purpose? To hide. So, that is the children of Israel hid from this enemy that had come to them to torment them. I want to tell you that hiding is not a solution to anything. If the devil wants to hit you, if you don't have God, he will. You have nowhere to hide. There's that movie called Nowhere to Hide. No place to hide, something like that. So that's what the devil always does. When the devil hits someone hard, instead of seeking the Lord, what they do, they hide. So the children of Israel hid. Verse 3, this is what verse 3 says. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, the Midianites would come up, also the Amalekites and the people of the east would come up against them. So every time the Israelites uh, uh, planted their seeds, the enemies came and plucked their food, and they ate and they destroyed. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza, and they left no substance for Israel, neither sheep, no ox, no donkey. So every season, the enemy would come and bring distress to the children of Israel who would take all their meals, all their plants, their animals, their donkeys. Amen. Ah, verse 4. That's verse 5. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents coming coming in as numerous as locusts because they had their camels uh, sorry coming in, in coming in as numerous as locusts but they and their camels were without number and they would enter the land and destroy it so the enemy would come in big numbers sometimes when the enemy comes to us he does not come in small numbers he comes in big numbers like big Big impact, big, like you really feel it. Like when a lockdown comes and you say they said 40 days, 42 days, and you don't know whether to be increased or decreased or whatever. That's a big thing, it's not a small thing. I want to tell you when the enemy hits, that sometimes the enemy hits bad, hits hard, you know. So, Israel, verse 6, so Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. So because of the, the constant torment, Israel became so poor, so impoverished, so down. You know, there's that moment when the enemy hits and you feel it is coming so down. You have no hope. You have, you even look through your phone for that phone number to call for help. But every time you call someone, they tell you, I'm also in hospital. Uh, I have a sick person. I lost an uncle. You know, that moment. That moment. But you know what the, is the children of Israel did? Verse 6. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. So that is what we, we are doing now as a church. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. To simply cry out to the Lord. Because the Lord hears. The Bible says that our God does not sleep. He does not slumber. And his hand is not too short that he cannot come and you know, do for us what he's supposed to do in our lives. But maybe he's waiting for you to call upon him. Maybe he's waiting for us to pray out to him and tell him, God, take the will. Take the will. Take the will. You know there are battles that are physical. But there's a battle that and it's beyond the physical battle. It's now a spiritual battle. But we are encouraged by the hope that Christ won it all for us. He won it all for us. The only thing you do when you cry to him, you simply believe on him and he will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. So what happens when the children of Israel cry out to the Lord? Verse 7. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites and the Lord sent a prophet.
prophet. You know the Lord responded. The Lord responds to your cry. The Lord responds to our cries. The Lord responds. He's only waiting for you to call up on him. Simply, I know you have tried all avenues and you are failing. But the good thing, when you call on God, God comes and is willing to come for you. I'm so happy and so persuaded that God is willing to come up for you. Amen. I know if something can come and hit you so hard. It can come and hit your family, your relatives, your surroundings, your family. And like you feel like every hope is gone. And you try it now to begin to get other, other, other avenues, you know. Maybe I try this. I try which doctor. Maybe I try this, uh, you know. Maybe I try this. Maybe I try this. But no. God is willing to arm up for you. Just cry to him. The Bible said when the, the children of Israel prayed to God, he sent them a prophet. He sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord of Israel, I brought you out of Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. You know when the situation you are in, God sends a man. Every situation you go in, the answer, God is answer always will be a man with the word. Maybe it would have the man with the word to tell you that don't give up. Yeah. Maybe through the singing, God spoke to you. Maybe through the worship, God spoke to you. So when you cry to God, God will always answer. But many times, he's going to answer you through his word. Through his word. So God sent a prophet to them. And the prophet, the prophet said, I brought you out, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, out of the hand of the, all those who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. This is what the man of God said. Verse 10. Also I said to you, I am the Lord your God not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell but you have not obeyed my voice so the answer to the cries of the Israelites was the word of God and God told them don't be afraid of your enemies don't be afraid of that enemy do not be afraid and again God added but you have not obeyed my voice Praise the Lord. So, do you obey the voice of the Lord in this time? So, by the way, how are you going to know the voice of the Lord when you don't read the word of God? So, the word of God is what we need this season. The healings are in the word of God. The healings we need. The marshes of healings are in the word of God. The Bible says in Psalms that he sends his word. He sent his word and healed all their diseases. His word Again, the Bible says in Psalms that the, uh, the, entrance of, the entrance of his words bring light. Bring light. So every time the word of God comes in our hearts, in our lives, enlightenment comes, answers come, healing come in the name of Jesus. What you need is the word. What you need in this season is the word of God. Why don't you get that word and you, you, you tie it on yourself? You tie it on your heart. You meditate it. You meditate upon it day and night. Here as a church, this season we are reading the book of Proverbs. And the Lord is showing us the wisdom. He is the wisdom. He is the wisdom. Christ is our wisdom. So every verse in the book of Proverbs is, is a healing. Praise the Lord. So we are in a much better place. We are wiser in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So, verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth, terebinth tree, which was in, in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the, the Abies, Abies the right. While his son Gideon uh, threshed wheat, the white press, in order to hide it from the Midianites. So, it happens that as Israel is hiding and they are quaking, they are all like crying, the enemy is beating us. The enemy is beating us. 
some young man called Gideon is somewhere trying to make food, trying to make wheat for the children of Israel who are in hiding. Do you realize that when a situation hits you, not everyone will hide? There are people who are not going to hide. People who say, no, for us we believe our God, he will take us through. I want you to be one of the people that are going to say, we are not hiding. We are not being fearful. When everyone is else is negative, making the negative statements, some Gideon out there, some David out there, out there, some Sarah watching me out there will say, no, me, I'm not hiding. I'm not fearful. My Redeemer lives and he will take us through this season powerfully in Jesus' name. We need a Gideon of the season. So this, this boy, young boy called Gideon, this, he was a son. He was busy making wheat in the, with the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. The guy was creative. Even amidst the scares and, uh, and the cries, the guy was creative. He never hid. Can you be the, the, the Gideon? You can. You can. Praise the Lord. So what happens when Gideon chooses not to hide? What happens when Gideon chooses to still serve the Lord amidst the fears? What happens when Gideon says my head is going to stay up even if all other heads are down mine is staying up what happens watch what happens next verse 12 so as Gideon was doing what he was doing the angel of the Lord appeared to him the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said unto him the Lord is with you mighty man of valor that is a statement that is too strong and the Lord is giving it for you mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you. Imagine telling a fearful man, a, a man whose brothers and sisters are hiding, whose relatives are hiding and quaking, saying, man, this disease has come to kill every one of us. But God had other things on his mind. Our God, always where there's fear, God puts faith. Where there's fear, God will always come to you with a statement of faith which is through the word of God. So God comes with a faith statement. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. I know many of you are waiting for the Lord to speak to you, but the Lord will not speak to you when you are hiding. The Lord does not speak to hiding people. The only thing the Lord speaks to hiding people is that statement. You are disobeying my word. Believe my word. But when you choose to come out of the hiding, and you said, no, I'm going to believe God for my generation. I'm going to believe God for healing. I'm going to believe God and pray for my generation. The word of God will come to you. God will speak to you. God will give you the assignment of your generation. The assignment of your generation does not find you sleeping. The assignment will not find you quaking. The assignment does not find you hiding. The assignment finds you working. Working for the Lord. I remember that song we sang. I'll be somewhere when he when he calls me. You know that song? When he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for my God. So the Lord only calls you when you are working. But when you are doing something, not really when you are hiding. I know hiding is the natural response, really, eh, to fear. We everyone else, like we're hiding, we are saying, man, uh, we hide. You know, we are like giving really up. Eh? But the assignment of God will not find you in your hiding place. No. The assignment of God will find you working, believing, praying, fasting, reading his word. That's where the next assignment is coming. I know some of, someone here watching me, maybe you've, you've been uh, believing God for your next, di next direction in life. You're saying, hey God, I'm so stuck in this place. God, what next? I don't know. I've tried this, but I'm so stuck. I don't know what what is coming next? God is telling you, keep working, keep serving, keep your faith. Your next assignment is coming. The next word, the word is taking that is taking to you, your next level is coming now and now. And that word is the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Amen. The story goes on and on and on. Where did you told God, you know, God, I am so weak, I can't manage, you know, but God was so purposed. You know God is purpose for people who serve him. Your fears cannot change God's mind. You cannot say, God, me, I'm shy. 
So your shyness cannot change God's mind for you. No. Even your history. Some of you have history that is like, like as that as uh, as that is itself. Like you are saying, but God, you can't use me. You know, God, you know me. You know me. I was a bad, bad man. You know, I was bad. But God is saying, you know, it is you. You are the mighty man of valor, mighty woman of valor. I am with you. I'm sending you. We have, we have picked you. But you say, God, I don't have the qualifications. God is saying, it is you. But God, you see, the people have a bad testimony about me. Eh? You know, oh, people have a bad testimony about me. God is saying, you know, it's not about people. It's about me. It's about me. Me, I see potential in you. Me, I see a future in you. Me, I see purpose in you. Praise the Lord. So don't hide the mark. The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Praise the Lord. So whatever you are going through, just be still. The Bible says in Psalm uh, 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Be still and know. Be, being still and knowing. Those things go hand in hand. That means you cannot know unless you are still. And still simply means peace. Shalom. Be still. Be at peace. Be at peace. Throw away your anxiety. You know that anxiety we have. The panic. You know that panic that comes. Every time you listen to the news, that there's a panic that comes. Every time you listen to, uh, to, to a, pre, uh, a presidential address, there's, there's that panic that comes. Every time you, you watch, you know, news, some panic comes. So you cannot be still and panicking at the same time. Being still means rest. Be peaceful. That word called shalom in the Hebrew. Peace is shalom in the Hebrew. Which means happiness, peaceful, prosperous. Those are the words that go with that word. Peace. Peace. So I speak peace in your life in Jesus' name. I know you've been panicking. You've run here and there and there. But God is telling you at this moment, be still and know. So when you are still, it is when you will be able to know that he is God. Knowing, knowing, knowing that he is God. Amen. It's a deep thing. I don't want to go deeper in that. But be still. I just want to encourage someone, even as I wind up. Just be still. God is still at the throne. He's still fighting for you. He knows you by name. The Bible says he knows you by name. And he says you are mine. You are mine. So you are not a vagabond. You're not like a vagabond who, who like is homeless, no, no father, no mother, orphan, what not. No. You have a God who loves you. You have a father who cares, who loves you more. Amen. Praise the Lord. You have that father. One man of God says, uh, God is not, the problem is that God cannot bless us. But the, the issue is we, can, we, we, we don't have the capacity to receive. Because we don't believe that he loves us that much. Some, someone told me, hey, how can the message of the gospel be so simple? Why do you simplify it a lot? Please add more, eh? add more complex things. No, it is not complex. He simply loves you. That is so simple. That's the simplest message you can ever receive. He simply loves you. Amen. To that level of sending his son to die for you. That's the biggest love. Amen. Lastly, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. This is what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Be anxious for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything. Don't panic. But in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, make your request be known unto God. Let your request be known unto God. So, uh, do you have that, that uh, temptation to be anxious? 
The Bible tells us don't. Yeah, just don't. Don't be anxious for anything. Yeah, don't be anxious for anything. You know that time when you're anxious, like you're, you're like, the world is going to get on fire and the bomb, the time bomb is getting off any time. God is telling you, don't be anxious. It's a command, don't be anxious. So if you don't be anxious, what do you do? For you, be, for you to be able not to be anxious, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. When we pray to God, we pray with thanksgiving. Why? Because God knows everything we go through. He's not like blind. He knows. Our God is not like that next policeman, the, next, the policeman next to your house, or the traffic guy that stopped you last night. No. Our God is a loving God. Amen. So make your request be known to God. Imagine, he knows, but he's telling you, uh -uh, we are, we, I need partnership. Tell me, and I'll come. I know, but tell me. Let us do this thing in together. Because with prayer, for you, you think you are telling God your problems, but simply you are, you are simply getting, getting connected to, to him. You are simply falling in love with him every time you pray. For you, you think you are going to God to tell him your problems, but for him, he's looking for your heart to get connected into that love relationship with him. He loves to simply relate with you. That's why, even if he knows, he tells you, tell me. Make your request known to God. So don't think he's blind. Don't think he doesn't know. He knows. And verse 7, and the peace of God, the peace we talked about, of be still, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. How I pray that the peace of God will come to you, to your family, to your life, in Jesus' name. The season we are in, even parents fear for their children. They are thinking, hey, my child may go to the shop and come back with a problem. You know? <laughs> so, like, people are scared. But I speak peace in your situation. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. This peace cannot be understood by human wisdom. It surpasses all understanding. It is with you. I pray that it will be with you in Jesus' name. That it will guard your heart. It will guard your mind. It will fill your life. It will fill your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are ready to stand with you in this time. We are ready to pray with you. Just send us your prayer request. Uh, uh, reach out to us with the, uh, that phone call. And the Lord shall surely bless you. Amen. So even as I wind, I, I wind up, the Bible says, don't go in the house of God empty-handed. So we believe this is the house of the Lord. Don't come empty-handed. Amen. So I'm going to give you opportunity to sow your seed in this ministry. In Jesus' name. If you're a member of this church, you can send in your tithe, you can send in your offering, even if you're not a member of this church, and you simply want to, to thank God for the ministry, you want to bless God for the ministry, you want to support the ministry. The numbers are down on the screen. The mobile money numbers are down on the screen. So simply go to your mobile money and send in your seed. And the Lord shall surely bless you. Maybe it's, it's, it's what God is waiting for. You know? Sometimes we sow seed and we think that God has not seen. When you sow seed, seed comes out. It is only seed that will bring fruit from the ground. The fruit in the ground only responds to seed. Only seed, not prayer. It does not. The fruit in the, in, the, in, the, in the ground does not respond to prayer. It does not respond to prayers. The seed in the ground only responds to seed. That's why when you put a, the, a, an, apple, an apple seed in the ground, an apple fruit will come out. That's how it happens. So sow your seed. And the Lord shall surely bless you. May God keep you. May God, God keep your family. May God keep all every, everyone around you safely. In Jesus' name. I love you. God bless you. And bye-bye.